Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. I hope those are watching right now are doing great and having good health. This video is about human physiology, digestion and absorption. And this is the first tutorial following the uh, syllabus of A-levels. Uh, so students, those are studying right now A-level or uh, HSC biology, you know that in your book where the nutrition and the digestion of human physiology started, this is a long chapter and there are a lot of things that to be explained and we need to understand things very carefully and sequentially so that we can see the holistic scenario when we'll study about any uh, system like digestive system, blood circulatory system, respiratory system, even excretory system. So all systems are different different uh, things that is actually combining in our body. So this is the first lecture where we'll focus only the digestions and absorption process. So uh, that will be a combination of sequential classes, maximum 8 to 9 tutorials and this is the first one. Before you can understand this one, I hope you probably see this uh, very simple looking digestive system in our body that started from the mouth to anus and the whole lines are called alimentary canal or um, alimentary canal or digestive tube. So before we going to explain all this, we need to know what is food and then what is nutrition. Food is actually naturally derived solid or liquid material consisting of specially protein, carbohydrate and lipids that is we will be working on in our organisms, living organisms to produce uh, energy, growth and development so all these things which is naturally driven foods so when this food is obtained converted into a body substance that process is called nutrition so food is the material food is the material naturally derived material solid or liquid that we are taking and then the process of nutrition the process of nutrition is that it makes it um, convert it into a body substance and then we take food we know that humans are omnivorous animals I mean we take a lot of variations of food in these variations what is the most important thing is that we, we take carbohydrate we take proteins we take lipids lipids and then vitamins then minerals minerals and water okay so now you see that carbohydrate protein lipids vitamins minerals water and fiber these are the food particles that is present when you take any food which is naturally derived solid or liquid material and then when you take now we have to understand what is the digestions. These are all complex chemical compounds that should be converted into simple absorbable soluble compounds that will be taken place in our body by the specific actions of enzymes that will be inhibited by uh, or that will be actually done by some other functions of hormones. So now you see when you think about carbohydrate, proteins and lipids, these three things, I mean these three food particles needs digestion process. But the rest of the thing that is vitamin, minerals and water, they are actually directly absorbable to our body. But these three things like proteins, carbohydrate and lipids, they need to convert it, they need to break it down and then they need to be in a form that we can actually absorb, the simpler form. So enzymatic actions and hormones actions are required to break down all these fat materials. So what happens when we take foods? Our body, uh, our body is actually, uh, you know, it's the oceans uh, inside and it has a number of hormones and enzymes which is actually uh, accelerating all these activities inside our body. So when we take a food consisting of all these materials, vitamins, minerals and water is directly absorbed in our body. But when I think about 
carbohydrates these carbohydrates will be actually transformed into glucose glucose by the action of amylolytic enzyme amylolytic enzyme this is very important amylolytic enzyme so the proteins proteins that is actually converted into amino acids amino acids with the actions of proteolytic proteolytic enzymes and the lipids that is actually converted into the fatty acids the fatty acids and glycerol glycerol by the actions of lipolytic enzyme lipolytic enzyme so very simply we can say those foods we are taking the foods we are taking by the actions of enzymes enzymes and hormones and then breaking into some absorbable or soluble particles like soluble soluble particles so we can say that digestion is a biochemical process by which the insoluble and indigestible particles will be breaking down with the actions of enzymes and hormones and that will be converted into soluble and digestible forms. This biochemical process is called digestion. So we have digestive system that started from mouth to anus. So we take food through our mouth, we have a buccal cavity inside and we have strong teeth, we have tongue and then we chew and then after swallowing we take food through this pipeline and this lines is called alimentary canal or digestive tube. So simply carbohydrate that is a part of food particles that will be converted into glucose by the actions not only actually glucose there are a lot of other things I mean I'm just giving you a very simpler idea that carbohydrate will be the simpler form of carbohydrate with the actions of amylolytic enzyme so thialine, maltase, amylase these are the amylolytic enzyme in case of proteolytic enzyme, trypsin, chymotrypsin uh, these are the proteolytic enzymes there are a lot of others enzymes that will work here in case of when we will study about digestion process in small intestine in lipids lipids that will be converted into fatty acid or glycerol which is easily absorbable by our body cells that will be under the actions of lipolytic enzyme so lecithin phospholipase lipase these are the lipolytic enzymes so digestion is a very simple thing that digestion is a biochemical process where enzymatic and hormone activities will be breaking down the complex form of food to the simpler form of food that is easily digestible so very simply we have understood that the primary discussions about Digestions. Now you think about the digestions. What are the main purpose? The main purpose is that digestions is actually divided into two different titles. We can say that if we see that uh, digestions, digestions is actually divided into two types. That is digestive, digestive tube or elementary canal and the other for is digestive gland digestive gland all these things are important the digestive tube that means started from mouth to anus it has a series of connectivity and then digestive gland also which secretes hormones and enzymes these chemicals that will be acting as a breaking down factors so digestive glands are those what is the salivary gland salivary gland we know we have three pairs of salivary gland that is parotid gland submandibular gland and sublingual gland 
So we have three pairs of salivary gland, parotid, submandibular, and sublingual. So mandible, submandible means after, it's under the mandible, and sublingual means under the lingua, that is tongue, and parotid gland. So salivary gland we have. Another important gland that we need to understand that is liver. Liver, the largest gland. I mean the chemical laboratory. We have to study about liver if you want to know clearly about digestive system. And then we need to think about pancreas. Pancreas is a mixed gland where enzymes and hormones both are secreted. This is very important. Leaf-like gland and this is mixed gland because it has both exocrine and endocrine activity you know that exocrine and endocrine that exocrine gland that secretes enzyme and endocrine gland that secretes hormones so pancreas is a mixed gland because it secretes both hormone and enzyme so i shall definitely upload uh, two different videos based on liver and pancreas because we need to understand the structure of liver and then the function of liver. After that we need to know the structure of pancreas and the function of pancreas and also salivary gland. So if this is the important gland that is acting on our digestions. Same way in digestive tube if you see that we start from mouth to anus. Now you see the mouth here. I mean if you see that this is the and then this is the mouth buccal cavity and then the, the tube that you are seeing right now here this is actually esophagus so in digestive tube we can start from number one that is mouth or inside we can say this is buccal cavity so we say B -U -C -C -A -L -O, buccal cavity and then number two after that but after that that is uh, esophagus esophagus and then this is stomach stomach then small small intestine intestine and then large large intestine and number six is uh, uh, anus. So very simply we can say that from mouth to anus this is the long six to eight meter long digestive tube. So this is esophagus, esophagus and this is stomach. There are a lot of discussion based on these that the structure of stomach I mean uh, when I mean the, the esophagus opens in the part of stomach, this is called cardiac and this is pyloric part. It has a greater curvature and a lesser curvature. So stomach is a bag-like substance or bag-like uh, organs where we actually, you know that food particles comes into first contact here and then after that you see the small intestine uh, start. So from the pyloric part of stomach to the starting of large intestine, the whole lines are called small intestine. And small intestine are consisting of three other parts. That is duodenum, jejunum and ileum. Duodenum, jejunum and ileum. These three things is sequentially combined of small intestine so the first part is called duodenum the second part is called jejunum and the last part of the small intestine is called ileum so small intestine combined of three smaller segment that is duodenum jejunum and ileum so do not break the sequence duodenum then after jejunum then after ileum and then when it started the large intestine we see a very small projections here and this is called appendix this is called appendix appendix then after when the large intestine starts this is called ascending colon 
because this colon is moving upwards, ascending colon. And then this part is called transverse colon. And then this is called descending colon. And there is another curve inside. This is called sigmoid colon. And then the part is called rectum. And then this is anus. So if we, if we uh, again subdivide the large intestine, we will find that ascending colon, transverse colon, sigmoid colon, no, descending colon, and then sigmoid colon. So ascending, ascending means going upwards. Trans, transverse, that is parallel. This is descending colon descending colon going downwards and sigmoid sigmoid colon it has a anti-gravity curvature so very simply i'm giving you a very simple uh, explanation regarding the elementary candle because i'm going to explain next each and every single part within elaborations because it requires 25 to 30 minutes in each section where i'll explain about stomach explain about small intestine, large intestine, about liver and pancreas. So that would be a sequentially the combination of all tutorials. When you'll see each of them, then hopefully things would be much more clear. And even if you read your book with patience to understand things, that will be much more better. So we have mouth, buccal cavity, and then esophagus, then stomach, then small intestine, and then large intestine. So very simply, we say digestions. Physically, we can say digestive tube and digestive gland. Most importantly, again, the digestive system also can be divided into two parts. That is mechanical digestion and chemical digestions. What is mechanical digestions? Where some sort of energy from outside that we are doing like chewing so we are we are chewing so we are using our teeth and tongues and all these things for mixing foods with the mucus and saliva that is one sort of like mechanical process of digestion and again when food is traveling through the digestive canal uh, the movement peristalsis is going on that is why there are some changes happening in the motion of food that is also the part of uh, mechanical process of digestion but chemical process that means where all sort of enzymes and hormones will be acting so simply uh, we can divide it also the digestion system into two sides that is chemical digestion and mechanical digestion so in the first tutorial in human physiology we just study about the digestive tube and digestive gland what is digestions what is food and nutrition so we need to understand the enzymes name that is amylolytic enzyme proteolytic enzyme and lipolytic enzyme there are a lot of names under amylolytic enzymes which is the main reason for breaking down the carbohydrate to glucose and lipolytic enzyme from fat to fatty acid and proteolytic enzyme from protein to amino acid so very simply we need to understand the things and then in the next tutorial I'm coming up with the explanation of uh, the digestive system or digestion process in stomach, in small intestine and uh, large intestine. See you in the next tutorial. Stay well.